older than I was. Hold my mute while I shout. Developing new ways to bless. Activating faith tools. Got my mind on the sky, but I'm taking all my cool. You ain't good morning. Good, good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. This is He Speaks with me. Rock. Episode you 4. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for all your support. Come on, y'all. Let's see. This week, we're going to talk about distractions. We all deal with distractions. We get distracted with life, kids, family, spouse, little petty problems, Facebook, Twitter, whatever it may be, Instagram. We all have distractions. But we must learn to focus in God so that we can do better in life. Uh, Again, this week, we're reading from Abundant Life by Mr. Thomas Peoples and God's Calling by Mr. A.J. Russell. Again, peep these people. Very good reading. Come on, y'all, let's eat. Abundant Life, we're going to pick up where we left off last week. Uh, Worry. Worry equals care or careful. If you read in the Bible, it says take care or be careful. They mean worry. Worry, the word worry isn't found much in the Bible. The concept of worry or anxiety is referred to the word care. So in Philippians 6, Paul says, don't have care or worry over anything at all. Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall be kept, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 4, 6. So we should avoid worry like we try to avoid sin. In the parable uh, of the sower, Jesus taught us that cares or worries are one of the principal tools that Satan used to distract us from the word of God. This is the way Satan gets us. This is the way the devil gets us. He don't have to beat us. He just got to stop you from doing what you're supposed to do. We got to stop getting distracted. Matthew 13, 22. This is one of my favorite Bible verses. And the one of whom so was sown among the thorns. This is a man who hears the word and the cares of life and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. The deceitfulness of riches. See, it is nothing wrong with getting rich or having riches. But it can deceive you into a false state of being. You can think that that money is holding you. Money should be a manifestation of what you have inside of you. Not the thing that holds you in place or the thing that keeps you in your spot. God should be keeping you in that spot. And that should be a manifestation of your relationship with God. And that's how you should get riches. Otherwise, the riches will choke the word of God out of you. And therefore become your demise. As they say, a fool and money. and a Money in a fool's hand will soon depart. Satan doesn't need for us to curse God. Or murder one. Or commit idolatry or adultery. He don't need you to do no big sins. Just a little wee bit of sin. He knows the effectiveness of distraction. What better victory for Satan than having a apparently strong Christians fall because of his cunning diversion of their mind? He did you hear what he said? He didn't say no weak Christian. He said apparently strong Christians. See, you apparently strong Christians, he gonna come at y'all. He ain't coming at them weak ones, them weak ones running with him. So, if the devil ain't coming at you, you need to watch who you with. One of the most important things I have learned is that keeping God before us keeps our mind on the right things. God helps our focus. God is focused, people. Laser focus. Michael Jordan, greatest of all times, by far, let's not have that conversation. Michael Jordan, greatest of all time, touched basketball. The man had focus. That laser focus on the rim, that laser focus, he would do all types of stuff in the air and come back to that, ah, on that thing. That right there was laser focus. 
Mike Tyson in his heyday had laser focus on a man's jaw. I, it, it didn't take him long to get that laser focus. One minute, 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Many fights he had. At that time, he had laser focus. He was in tune with the power of God. Gave him a super knockout blow. Michael Jackson in his day had focus of when the man got on stage, he command everybody on earth, grown men, fat. Oh my God! Michael had laser focus. Moonwalk across the stage and made grown man faint. That's laser focus. That is the focus of God. That's what I'm talking about. I ain't saying you gotta be like Mike, but you might wanna be like Mike on that one with that focus. You wanna be like Mike Tyson, Mike Jordan, Michael Jackson in that focus. That focus that made them the great they was at that time. Worry is a serious distraction. In the next scripture, Jesus shows that riches, liquor, and the temptation to overindulge in food or some other pleasure could be used by Satan as a distraction, but he also puts cares in the same category. Now, let's look at this. It says, riches, liquor, and the temptation to overindulge in food or some other pleasure. Food, alcohol, drugs. FDA. Food, Drug and Alcohol Administration. You ever wonder why it's the food, the alcohol, and the drug? Because they're all one same spirit, same thing. If you overindulge in food, you know better than a crackhead. You overindulge in crack, you know better than a fat person. If you overindulge in alcohol, you know better than a crack. It is all some type of addiction. And we all have addictions. Food, drugs, Alcohol, I tell you, is a spirit. Those things are to be used in moderation for living, but not to the point that you're gluttonous with it. When it becomes gluttony, that's when it becomes the sin. That's when that thing starts to take over your life, and now it's that thing that is your God, and God has no longer become your God. It has now become idolatry because now you praise that thing, you worship that thing, you must have that thing like you should be seeking the word of God. Luke 21, 34, and take heed to yourselves, least at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and care of this life, and so that that day come upon us unaware, for as a snare shall it come on all that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Snare is a trap, so like a trap it shall come on all that dwell on the face of the earth. Now, I looked up the definition of suffering. S-U-R-F-E-I-T, suffer. It's a verb. It's an action word now. To cause someone to desire no more of something as a result of having consumed it in excess. Done it in excess. So you ever heard the story about the, you know, catch the little kids smoking so they, they give them a whole pack of cigarettes, put them in the closet. He suffered that thing to where you got so much of it, you don't even want no more. Uh -uh, it just make you sick to smell it. That's how I got with alcohol. I used to drink crown by the gallons. It got to the point where I got so drunk. Now, the smell of alcohol can almost make me sick sometimes. I can drink a brew. I can drink a beer. I can chill with the fellas. I'm not too far from that. But alcohol itself, in large amounts, the smell of it, literally makes me sick to my stomach because I got so gluttonous with it, I was suffering this thing. Suffering means overindulgence. So here, carry or wear is put in a class with drunkenness and gluttonous. Worry is like gluttonous. Worry is like drunkenness. Some of you getting drunk and high on worry every day, all day, and then talking about folks who got addictions. You sitting here worrying about how you're going to get here, what you look like, what they think, what the kids, what the husband, what the wife, what the job, what the everything, what the everything, but what you should be worried about. That is the same as sitting out just putting a twinkie after twinkie after honey bun, honey bun, honey bun, and twinkie, and a honey bun, and twinkie, and a honey bun, and twinkie. You might as well just smoke it all up. Just You might as well. It's the same thing when you worry. It's the exact same thing. It's no different. It's the same thing. And, and we need to learn that that's the same thing and know that all of that is killing us. All of that is distracting us. All of that is keeping us from the word of God. Worry is an evil force 
And we should want to get rid of it. It's an evil force. Evil. It's not supposed to be a part of your life. It's evil. Let's get rid of it, people. Hospitality can lead to destructions. People even fall into worry when doing good deeds. Once, when Jesus was visiting Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, Martha developed a feeling of anxiety over serving everybody. Jesus told Martha that she was worrying about two. two Martha, he said, Martha, Martha, you're worrying about too many things. When all she was doing was trying to feed everybody. People have to eat, don't they? People gotta eat. Yes, you gotta eat. You gotta eat. You gotta eat. She's so worried about everybody eating, she don't realize she got Jesus sitting right there with her. How many of y'all so worried about feeding everybody, taking care of everybody, Jesus sitting right next to you and you ain't even paying no attention? Luke 1040, but Martha was covered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, do you not care? My sister has left me to serve alone. How many people been left to serve alone and you're going to God? And listen to what he's going to tell you. Bid her, therefore, that she should come help me. Say, Lord, please make him come back. Please, I need help with these kids. Please make him come back, Lord. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, you are careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. See, Martha was worried about the wrong thing. She was worried about Martha. She was worried about help, but Mary had chosen Jesus and moved on with that thing. See, Mary wasn't worried about serving no more. Mary was in awe of Jesus, just Lord, while Martha over there trying to serve biscuits and water to everybody, you two stop serving. He's the person you're supposed to serve. Forget these persons down. Don't serve these little outlet stores. Serve the manufacturer. Go straight to the manufacturer. Stop dealing with these outlet stores. The point Jesus is making, don't even let chores or hospitality take you away from the feet of Jesus. Martha was missing out on fellowship with the Son of God. She should have told her guests to make themselves at home. Feeding everyone was an agenda she took upon herself. Now, that's some synonyms with suffering in that here. Let's look at some of these synonyms with suffering. To gorge, overfeed, overfill, to cram. Stuff, overindulge, fill with food, drink, or drugs. We got to stop overindulging in worry and all this other stuff when we should be overindulging in one thing. That's the overindulging thing we should be overindulging. That should be your drug. That should be your high. That, think about it. Where is it? He high. Who said high? It looked low. Well, that should be your high. Uh, but this one here gonna touch really hard on y'all. Not even slavery should worry us. There are many things which we have no control. Paul even included slavery in this. First Corinthians seven twenty one. Are you called being a servant? Care not for it. But if you may be made free, use it rather. In other words, even if you are a slave, don't worry about it. That is easy for us to say, Paul. But Paul was serious. He did serious. I use this verse to emphasize the degree of trust we should have. Our trust in God should know no limits. That's the P, no limit. Don't think that God isn't strong enough to make a wonderful and exciting life for you, slave or not. How many of y'all could be in slavery and still praise God like slaves did? Do you know how that must feel? You learn the thing from the people that is enslaving and got you in chains and now you done found something deeper than they ever even knew and it now holds you in this thing that if you get prosecuted, slave, there ain't no end to it. You don't see no end to it. You barely speak the language. You can't read and write and you are still praising the Lord. That is talk. That's faith, people. 
That's the faith black people was built on. We need to pull from that energy. We can have faith in the middle of a thing that is so big and so scary and so enormous it seems like it's never going to end and still have the faith to pull us through it. That's the faith and power we should be pulling from. Don't think that God isn't strong enough to make a wonderful and exciting life for you, slave or not. God can put glory in our heart that no one can touch. We won't likely be slaves, but life may deal with us equally distressing problems such as paralysis. Children with multiple sclerosis, aged parents needing care. See, if you don't have a sick child and you're not sick yourself, eventually maybe it comes upon your parents. But there comes a day when the thing feels like it's so big that you can't beat it. You gonna need God. If you haven't met that day, it's coming. Because no one escapes it. Not on this planet, not while there are seasons. You will not escape it. Eventually, your health, your children's health, or your parents' health will be at ends with life. And you will have to pull from something else. You gonna want to know a God. You gonna want to know the God. You gonna want to know his phone number, have it on speed dial, and you gonna need him. Please go to him, people. Please go to Jesus. I came to Jesus and it was it was one of the most humbling experiences of my life. And I put it in a song and I told y'all I was gonna debut the song How I Met Jesus. So we're going to go ahead and play the song, and then we're going to come back and go to Mr. A.J. Russell, guard calling. So y'all listen to the song, and I'll be back after this. Now this went on for weeks for a total of about a 
hate The last one was a chiropractor I told him, give it to me straight He told me there's a difference between fake and faith You have faith, but your faith is the fiery lake And until you receive, you are deceived And I see the God in you, I know you believe So pray with me and accept Christ And that's the day I met Jesus and he changed my life but since then, I've been in and out of the world. At times, I don't miss a Wednesday or a Sunday at church. I read my Bible more than not. I pray for my enemies more than I cuss them out. I got a long way to go, narrow path, no doubt. But I'm better than I was. Hold my mute while I shout. Developing new ways to bless. Activating faith tools. Got my mind on the sky, but I'm taking off my cool. You ain't got a faith in me. Mr. A.J. Russell, we're going to read from March the 20th. Your foolish little activities are valueless in themselves, seemingly trivial or of seemingly great moment. All deeds are alike if, different, if directed by me. Just cease to function except through me. I am your Lord. Just obey me as you would expect a faithful, willing secretary to carry out your directions. Just have no choice but mine, no will but mine. I am dependent on no one agency when I am your supply. Through my channels, my help, and material can flow through his channels and his help through no agency he is your supply he supplies all our needs according to his riches through Christ Jesus Philippians 4 and 13 4 19 excuse me uh, let's dive into some things here I'm going to go to my phone here. If you don't have a Bible app, get your Bible app. It helps. Uh, it's good to have the Bibles. I like books. I like books. But I like to go to this Bible app because what I'm going to encourage y'all to do, and you can do it here on your Bible app if you got it. Uh, if you don't know what the Bible app looks like, this is what we're talking about right here. Bible app. Uh, we're going to search something. I want you to encourage you to do this. Go in there and search the word worry. It's going to pull up some Bible verses here. And we're going to go down these, and you can do it along with me. I'll give you time. Go ahead and search worry in your Bible app. If I was in the church, which I say, everybody say amen when you're there. I think I heard amen. Let's go. Uh, Matthew 6 and 25. It goes a couple verses down. Uh, two verses down, we'll go, Matthew 6, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what shall you eat, or what shall you drink, nor yet your body, what ye shall put on, is not the life more than me, and the body more than raiment. Raiment defines as clothing. Clothing. He says, is life not more than meat and body than raiment. See, clothing. Your body is not just what you wear. Your body is your spirit, your mind, your soul. You're not the clothes and the stuff we wear. That's another distraction. Those clothes 
It's nothing wrong with not liking nice things, but don't let that thing have you. You have that thing. Don't let the thing have you. My daddy used to always say, don't do the drug. Don't let the drug do you do the drug if you're going to do drugs. Some people letting worry do them, letting drugs do them, letting crack do them, letting weed do them, letting alcohol do them. If you're going to do it, people do it because the sin is most likely not in the thing you do. The the feeling and the the actions that resolve from it, whether you actually have condemnation about it, whether you actually feel that thing is wrong. And I'm not telling anybody to do drugs or alcohol. I'm definitely not telling you that. What I'm saying is, if you struggle with this thing, start with get rid of the condemnation that makes you go back to that thing. Because once you get rid of the condemnation, it's a little more easier to let that thing go. Let's go to another one. He's got a more button down here. Let's hit more. We want some more. Give us some more, Lord. Uh, let's slide down. I'm going to go to 1 Peter 5 and 7. Casting all I care upon him, for he careth for you. He careth for you. Now, casting all, we're going to take this care out, put worry. Casting all your worry upon him, for he worry for you. He worrying for you. You ain't got to do that. He got that part. He got that part. So you need to just get that out. It's an emotion you don't need. It's a feeling you don't need. God already got that part. Um, 1 John 4 and 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that fear is not made perfect in love. How many of y'all know that fear and love does not exist in the same body? Either you scared or you in love. See, fear, see the love of God is not the same as the fear of God. You got the fear of the Lord in you, you won't sin. The love of God will make you go to the word, make you learn more. The fear of God will keep you from sin. It's a difference. Uh, love and fear, you can't be scared of your spouse leaving you and love them at the same time. That scare will make you second guess some things. It'll make you doubt. It'll make you it'll make you second guess yourself. So that thing needs to be addressed. Whatever it is. If it's giving you doubt. Talk it out with your spouse. Don't live in fear. Live in love, and love communicates. Love says, hey, I feel this way. I need you to make me feel better. I need you to, to lay this worry aside, because that's what love does. Perfect love casts out fear, because if your love is perfect, you'll sit there and talk that thing out, and you'll cast that fear out. You'll talk it out, and you won't have that fear no more. Oh, no, baby, you the most beautiful thing. I don't want nobody. I don't want nobody but you, baby. What the? It... No, nah, she ain't got jack on you. Nothing. So, that fear, lay aside, baby. Matter of fact, let's go to the bedroom. Let me show you how much I love you. That's what you should be doing. Cast that fear out. The devil come immediately to steal. You better immediately steal the heart of your wife. You got to choose your mate every day. You got to choose to love them every day. And you, something, especially with women now, you're going to have to cast that fear out more than not. <laughs> because I got six daughters and a wife and been married many times and got a mother. Women just have more emotions than us. And sometimes you got to reassure them. And sometimes you got to preach to them. Amen? Amen. But fear is a distraction. Worry is a distraction. Life is a distraction. But God is the focus that we must obtain. We have to obtain it. Master it. Focus on it. Go to it. Practice in it. You can't just jump up in this world and expect it to pop, pop, work for you. It's not a magic trick. It's not magic, people. It is something that you got to practice. You got to learn. You got to live. You got to grow. And as you grow, your discernment will grow. And your discernment will tell you right from wrong. Sometimes you'll feel like you did the wrong thing, 
And then later on, you realize, man, if I didn't do that wrong thing, I would have never came to this conclusion, which is now an epiphany, which is now a change in lifestyle, which is now a paradigm shift. And now my mind thinks like this. And as a man thinketh, he also be. So I hope that thinking changes more toward God. That's the will of God. And that's my will for you. Again, this has been He Speaks with Kareem Walker. Please, people, let's not be distracted. Let's focus on God. Thank you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. <laughs>